people should recognize that Cape Cod National Seashore in particular is unique um, sort of in New England because it contains these extent, uh, extensive stands of early successional habitat um, which support organisms, frogs and toads, even um, s snakes, even some reptiles uh, that we can't find in these numbers elsewhere in New England or in the northeastern United States because typically coastal habitats like this are intensely developed and consequently paved which uh, prevents organisms that are semi-fossorial that spend a lot of time in the ground in early successional habitats from burrowing and they die and get run over. This is a calling survey point right here. We make little pathways up to a, a given point in the pond, stand there for five minutes and record what we hear in that five minute interval. And we go out, we begin the calling surveys about a half an hour after sunset. Um, well, we hear bullfrogs, green frogs, wood frogs, gray tree frogs, spring peepers, uh, fowler's toads, uh, and occasionally, if we're lucky, spadefoot toads. We hear pickerel frogs also. Hmm. I guess my favorite experience, or, or one of them, involved observing spadefoot toad breeding aggregations in the province lands. I happened to hit it on the night when they were out. So the province lands and surrounding areas were lit up with spadefoot activity. Pretty much in every lowland, every depression that penetrated the uh, groundwater level that had water in it uh, in the province lands also had spadefoot toads in it. There's usually a handful of spadefoots in one of these depressions at a given time. With my research I found that even within in the park, even though the Cape Cod National Seashore is relatively well protected, uh, I found that there was a, a, a negative relationship uh, between developed habitats and breeding effort in the Fowler's Toad. Still, nonetheless, even in a well-protected park, we're seeing the effects of human activities on the wildlife. Because we have tons of anecdotal observations on, as to how this stuff impacts the amphibians, but no one has put number values on it or tracked it very well over time. So things like road mortality, looking at road mortality on a species-by-species -species basis, um, figuring out how some of the uh, visitor use impacts in kettle lakes and kettle ponds is affecting uh, breeding in some of these uh, creatures is, is important. Um, looking at movement patterns, home range studies, a lot of this hasn't been done even for species that are relatively common here in the park. Basically everybody's on the road at the same time. So the frog and toad movements occur when most of the visitors are here in the park. And there's tons of people on the road when it rains. And there's also tons of frogs and toads on the road when it rains. And it's a, it's a problem, especially when gravid females are going to breeding ponds. So if you're wiping out X number of gravid females that goes to the breeding pond, each one of those gravid females has um, egg strings in her that has thousands of embryos in there. What's a toad eater? Everything. Everything feeds on on uh, young, especially the metamorphs. So there's a whole assortment of, of birds that will, different bird species that'll hang out around the edge of the ponds. So when the toads, when the tadpoles metamorphose, they emerge as little toadlets and it's sort of uh, an easy, easy meal for a lot of birds. Uh, well, hognose snakes are one, yeah. one sort of obligate toad eater. Uh, skunk, fox, coyote, raccoon, possum, these things all, all eat uh, various species of amphibian on the Cape. Um, and the list goes on and on. They're a real critical uh, component, they're a critical link, a trophic link between terrestrial and, and aquatic ecosystems on the Cape. And if you're perpetually removing those individuals from the population, it's bad for not only that species, but all the species that depend on the toad for nutrients. And see, if, if you're serious and, and you have some serious time to devote to this, you can volunteer and learn and through observation and from asking questions. And uh, if you want to do it recreationally, uh, probably don't go out in the middle of the day. You want to, later in the season anyway, in the summer, 
go out uh, just before sundown, around dusk, uh, you get to see a lot of uh, snake and toad movement then, not so much in the middle of the day, everything's hiding. Look at Kiki, Usually two years still! Old. He's and then the males will develop a movie. black <laughs> cat in the right. museum. Is that good? Look at how pretty it is. And that little so thing is pretty. what I got a degree. Really? Yeah. Tell you a PhD yeah. because of him. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Dr. <laughs> Lots of water. He is so cute. So I, I, I would assume that he? he can pop so it up when it's there. And I think he's the cutest thing I ever saw. No. Okay.